If you'd like to learn how to make some porcupine quill work decoration on birch bark, like these, I'll show you right now. In this video, coming up. Today, we're following through with this quilling project, the mm -hmm. lessons, and we're gonna work on birch bark today. I mentioned it in the last videos when we were doing the, haven't finished this yet, but. We made some progress on that though. Made a little bit of progress, adding more. I'm, actually, I've only just got one more row of white to do on here. I had mentioned, you put up the picture of that creel, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well that was quill work on birch bark. Yeah, so we're gonna do it on birch bark, and it's a really fun little project, a craft form. There's no sewing, <laughs> no needles, no thread. You're just poking holes in the birch bark. The biggest trick to it is, with birch bark, as you can see, this way, all right? And the lines in the birch bark point that out to you. So you can do like free forms and animals or flowers and things like that. And that's a little bit different. I'm gonna start us off with basic geometric sort of design layout in straight lines, straight bars of varying colors. And when you lay out your design on the bark, you wanna do your lines this way across, okay? And you'll, you'll see better as we go why I'm laying it out like this. So I'm just gonna lay out a series of lines about, I like to go about a quarter of an inch apart. Just for the sake of this video, I'm only gonna put on like five. So I've got six lines, five bases. I well, too have done some lines. That sounds really bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Today on Stockman Original, <laughs> We're gonna do some lines. <laughs> yeah. No win. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, the only tool that you really need besides the quills is an awl. An awl that is similar in, in diameter to the quills that you're gonna be using. And round, preferably. I have awls for sewing leather and such that are actually diamond cross shape, you know? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. For this, you want round. I think I'll start off with some red. So in case you missed the other videos on working with the quills, I'm putting them in warm water to soften the quills a bit so that they don't crack and break when we bend them about. And it only takes a minute if the water, depends on how hot the water is, of course. I'm gonna start in the center. So as I said, I got five rows. So I'll go right in the middle here with the awl, right on the line. You twist it as you're going through. And what that does is it, moves the fiber of the bark away from each other, opening it up as a whole. In time, that will close its back up on itself and pinch the quill in place. Now we take a quill and you stick one end in and then stick the other end in. And pull it right down. Oof. What's nice uh, too about this style of work is that you use smaller quills. Then the smaller the better, because as you can see, I've got all that on the back side, and eventually I'm gonna trim that off. You could probably manage to use this piece again, but it would be tricky because you don't have the point on the both ends of it again. So now, see, the next hole goes right in next to that one, first one, okay. I know I was kind of a little cloudy on my explanation as to why we're going this way, but you'll see as you lay these holes in, if you were laying the holes in along the grain line of the bark, it would just break right in half. But if you lay it this way, it won't. Later in the spring when we can get at the materials to do this, I'm gonna show you guys how to make one of these. This is an actual Indian made antique and it's what it's what I learned from. They've shape this tapered like it is for a reason, and that is so that the grain structure is not stacked up on itself. As they're poking holes to stitch this together, each hole is on a separate grain plane, you know, and so they're not in a row on the same, on the same grain line, and therefore it won't split out. If so if there were, a, there's a hole here, if there was a hole here, it would, make it easier to split that. Yeah, and, and yeah. this is old and hard to see the, the grain in it, but it, it's going this way on and that way, instead of straight up and down. Mm. 
goes straight up and down, you put a series of holes, it'll split out on you. Guaranteed. And the neat thing too is that when it comes up to the to the rim here, the grain is all like my fingers, you know, they're going up this way so that you can stitch close together as they did and it doesn't fall apart, doesn't split out. But we'll have fun with that, like I said, later in the in the spring. One thing I didn't mention and, and should have is that this bark has been kicking around for a while. Prior to starting this, I soaked it in hot water as, as well, just to kind of limber it up a bit. But would that not be necessary if it were just a fresh piece? Or do, or do you if need it was to a, let it dry for a while? Or? No, if it was fresh off the tree, it, it'd probably be good to go. But it does help, say, if you're going to fold it up into a container like that one I showed you, you'd want to soak it. Am I going to, I'm not going to use this again at all? No. Okay. No, and in, in fact, if you want, as you go, you could trim them off. You just want to be careful where you put your tips. Don't they know we're busy? <laughs> I'm not home. In a parallel universe. Okay. So I've got five quills laid in here. There, hopefully it shows. I'm gonna go ahead and trim them off just to minimize confusion. Now, because we used a round awl and turned it as we went through, it opens the grain up like that, you know, and it squeezes back down after. Because you put the wet quill in there and the water from the wet quill actually swells the bark back to closer to its original shape. So by trimming it off, I don't have to worry about them falling out of a round hole anymore. They're pinched in. Yeah, because I was actually concerned about making the hole I thought I'd made the hole too big. Well, you can, but then yeah. you, you get used to it. It's, it's a it's a practice thing, of course, and you don't want to make it really much bigger than you need to because it damages the, the bark. Well, I think on the second one that I'm putting in that I compensated because I said, oh, the holes were too big last time, and now I can't get it through. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the other thing about that second hole next to the first one, that helps to push the first one closed again. Right. But we're, we're going to actually be reusing those holes, reopening them, and you'll see in a, in a minute why. So we're going to continue. My design, I'm going to jump over here to the next row. Oh, you're right. Tweezers would be... You know, I can make that happen. <laughs> Let me stick one more quill in and I'll we'll get one. So you can poke it through with the awl as well. Yeah. As you get a collection of them stuck through there, that's when you find that, oh yeah, I want to trim that Ow. because <laughs> because I can't get at the one that I want to pull at. Yeah, let me go get a couple of... As long as they don't have nose hairs on them. Yeah. <laughs> Check that out. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> get to figuring things out out there. I dig around looking for the shorter ones just because the longer ones have a better use. Oops. Oh, What'd you do? Well, it was right on, on one of these ridges. Oh, yeah. And it, I kind of slipped into it, I guess. And so what I actually ended up doing was instead of making two holes, I just made it turned into one hole. Oh, yeah. Those, those little, these lines are a little bit different structure than the rest of the bar. Mm -hmm. So we're gently twisting it as you go in helps. If like you're careful one. as you pull the quill in and not pull it so that it actually goes down through that whole hole, you can sometimes just kind of hide that. When you look at a birch tree and you see the beautiful white bark, that's usually not shown when you make things out of it. Like with this little container, you'll see the actual white outer part of the bark is on the inside. One thing is that the bark wants to curl in, you know, it'll curl so that the white part gets rolled up inside, but the inner bark is closer to the tree. It's more alive, it's more flexible and, and, and oh, okay. tough. When, yeah, and when they, this part here, you see peels and all that. Well, this is all one plane of bark 
This is the side that would be out when making a canoe or anything, really. So I've got my next row in, and I don't know if that is the way the camera to do. Present it to these people over here, too. Yeah, it's good to kind of hold on to them when you're doing it so that they, they don't go flying, because the last thing you want in your foot uh. <laughs> is one of those <laughs> black ends. <laughs> very dangerous. You can put them in there. Right there. So I'm, I'm kind of doing a little checkerboardy sort of uh, affair so far. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll show you another little trick that's kind of a way to utilize these longer quills without wasting them. It's not necessary that you do it this way, but you can. So now I've got, I've run it down through. I've got a long piece of quill here. I'm gonna try a little trick to see if we can't use more of it. Put your holes in. I'm gonna do this while the hole is fresh so it doesn't close up on me. Turn it right around on on itself. Get just the right grip on it. And there, I've actually stitched it back up. And that makes me feel better that I haven't wasted so much yeah. of the quill. <laughs> So while these quills are damp from the, from the water, they're quite pliable, and you're able to do that. If you tried that trick with a, a dry quill, it would definitely break. Uh, my shirt bleaching us out. <laughs> yeah, well, I tried to, I'll get, I Jesse tried, in. I tried to get Jesse in, but huh. it's darker down there. So. If you drill, say you're making something like a shelter or something bigger or a canoe, or something. I would still use an awl and do it this way. If you use a drill to make your holes in the bark, it cuts the bark in a way that actually... Does it like remove material? Yes, and it exposes, well, ends like just like this. It can split out easier, and I don't believe that's how they did it. <laughs> You know, ancient folks had drills, stone drills and things like that, which they used, but I don't believe they used them on birch bark. Now these, we're doing these kind of like samplers, you know, not intending to turn them into anything more than that, but you can, say you do a design, you know, however big, and you after it's all done, you can take and cut that out and poke your holes and sew that onto a piece of rawhide or something to make mm. a barrette or some other sort of decorative thing. Okay, so I've got three squares on, staggered as such. Now I'm gonna come up here and do the same thing. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll show what I've got here so far. This is mm. the start of a little design. I decided I'm gonna put a, a, a little bit of blue right in the middle. I am working on doesn't look like much now, but that's going to be an M for, for Max. No, my wife's name is Molly. <laughs> M is for Molly, and M is for Molly and Max. Yeah, good. well, maybe you'll do two M's. I don't need a lot of these blue quills, so I just uh, have a few in the, in the wash there. I can show you, too, the back, how I've got it trimmed. You can see all the little whiskers here. Those in the end can be pressed. After this is all done, you can soak the whole piece in hot water so it gets nice and flexible and actually put it under a board or something on a flat surface with a heavy weight or a clamp or any other way to press it down. And that would flatten those out a bit. You leave it there till it dries. They will stay that way for the most part till they get wet again. <laughs> Pretty cool, I got three stitches with one quill. Wow. All right, so now I'm going to fill in, I'm going to start by filling in these four empty blocks with white, and I'm basically going back down through the same holes that the red occupy and the blue. See how that works out. What I did is each grouping of color, I did five quills, and I tried to space them, or place them. Mm -hmm. in a way that they will line up with each other. So I'm using the hole from this first red one and the hole from that first red one right. for my first white one. And it should fill in properly that way. Here we are. We've got all 
three colors that I'm going to do as far as we're going to take it. You can take it beyond this if you wish. Max, I think, might throw that picture of the creel on it just to show you how crazy you can get. Um, it's a lot of fun, really, once you get into the groove. This is what I, what I did. It's a little more simple than... This is Max's first yeah. run at this, so. Yeah. So I'm gonna give that to my wife and say, here, honey, it's all for you. Well, thanks for watching with us, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you run into any questions or anything like that, please get in touch with us. We'll sort that out. It's a lot of fun, this, this type of quill work. Thanks for being a part of the original tribe. Yeah, we do appreciate that very much. Your support is very important. Yeah.